Hey guys, today we are going to answer the question, how do I solve real world problems involving decimal operations? So to solve real world problems involving decimals, we need to read the problem and determine what the question is asking for. Then once we've determined what we're looking for, we will decide on a plan involving addition, subtraction, multiplication, and or division that can be used to answer the questions. And then we will follow the rules for operations with decimals. Let's look at number one. It says Abby is making a large sandbox. Each bag of sand covers about 12.5 square feet. If she has 4.25 bags of sand, how many square feet can she cover? So she has 4.25 bags that are about 12.5 square feet each. So to find the total, I can multiply these. And now let's think about our decimal operations rules. So I have a positive times a positive, so my final answer will be positive. And to multiply and divide, well, to multiply decimals, it's easier to change them into whole numbers. So I will move this decimal once and this one twice. So in total, I'm moving three decimal spaces. So now I'm going to multiply these like they're whole numbers, and then I will put back in three decimal places at the end. So we're going to do 125 times 425. So 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 2 is 12. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1 is 6. Okay, now we're going to do the 2. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5 and 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, now we are going to multiply the 4. So 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 2 is 10. And 4 times 1 is 4 plus 1 is 5. Now I'm going to add all this. This would be 5. This would be 2. Then 6 plus 5 plus 0 is 11. 1 plus 2 plus 0 is 3. And then I bring down the 5. And then I have to move back three decimal spaces since that's how many there were in the original numbers. So the 4.25 bags of sand would cover about 53.125 feet squared. All right, let's look at number two. It says Abby is using railroad tiles or large wood blocks around the edge of her sandbox. She will need eight of them to complete her sandbox. The railroad ties are 26.27 each, and there is a 49.50 delivery fee. How much will Abby pay in total for the railroad ties? So she's going to need eight of the railroad ties that are 26.27 each. So we will have to multiply that by eight, and then we will have to add the delivery fee to that. So let's start with 26.27 times eight. So a positive times a positive will give me a positive, and I have two decimals that I will add back at the end. So now we're gonna do 2,627 times eight. So eight times seven is 56. Eight times two is 16, plus five is 21. 8 times 6 is 48, plus 2 is 50. And then 8 times 2 is 16, plus 5 is 21. And I have to add my two decimal spaces back in. So she is going to pay $210.16 for eight railroad ties. And now we are going to add the delivery fee to that. So she paid $210.16 for the railroad ties, and we're gonna add the 49.50 delivery fee to that. 
So six plus zero is six. One plus five is six. Zero plus nine is nine. One plus four is five. And I bring down the two. So in total for the eight railroad ties and the delivery fee, she would pay $259.66. Okay, let's look at number three. It says Frank is flying a kite at 97.5 feet in the air. After 15 seconds, it has descended 10.25 feet. And after another 12 seconds, it has descended another 7.1 feet. What is the height of the kite after being lowered? So they kind of gave us some extra numbers here. We start at 97.5 feet. And if you notice, the question is just concerned with the height of the kite. So it doesn't really matter those numbers with the seconds. I'm going to cross them out so that I don't accidentally use them. I'm descending, so I'm going to subtract 10.25 feet. And then I descend again, so I will subtract 7.1 feet after that. So we're going to end up doing 97.5 minus 10.25 and then minus 7.1. So let's start with this first one right here, 97.5 minus 10.25. Going to add an extra zero there and I'll need to borrow. 10 minus 5 is 5, 4 minus 2 is 2. Bring down the decimal, seven minus zero is seven, and nine minus one is eight. So there's how high it is after the 10.25 feet it descended. Now it's gonna descend another 7.1, so I will need to subtract that. So five minus zero is five, two minus one is one. Bring down the decimal, seven minus seven is zero, and bring down the eight. So. After both of those descents, the kite will end up at 80.15 feet high. Okay, let's look at number four. Bailey and her friends want to buy a nice fruit basket for their director. The total cost of the fruit basket is at 75.35. Bailey will pay for $20 and then her friends will split her five friends will split the remaining cost. How much will each friend pay for their part of the fruit basket? So the total of the fruit basket was 75.35. And then Bailey's going to pay for 20. And then whatever that is, her five friends will split that cost. So we'll divide it by five. So let's start by determining what 75.35 minus 20 is. So five minus zero is five, three minus zero is three, bring down the decimal, five minus zero is five, and seven minus two is five. So after Bailey pays for her part, there will be $55.35 left to pay. And now we need to divide that by five. So five goes into five one time, one times five is five, We'll subtract, bring down the five. Five goes into five one time. Subtract, bring down the three. Five doesn't go into three, so let me bring down the next number. And five goes into 35 seven times. So seven times five is 35, and we subtract and get zero. So each of her friends will pay $11.07. All right, let's look at number five. It says, Jose is ordering dinner from a food truck. He orders two tacos, chips, and a drink. The tax was 56 cents. If Jose paid with a $20 bill, how much change did he get back? So the first thing that I want to determine is the total that Jose paid. So... Taco was $2.49, chips were $1.49, and drink was $1.99. He did chips and a drink and two tacos. So let's figure out what two tacos is first. So I'm going to do $2.49 times two. So there's two decimal spaces there. 
that I will add back at the end. So 249 times 2, 2 times 9 is 18, 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9, 2 times 2 is 4. So he's going to pay 498 for two tacos. Now I'm going to add the 498 and the 149 and the 199 to figure out how much he paid in total. So we're gonna do 498 plus 1.49, eight plus nine is 17, one plus nine is 10 plus four is 14, one plus four plus one is six. So there's with the chips, and now let me add the drink, 199. So seven plus nine is 16, one plus four is five, five plus nine is 14, one plus six plus one is eight. So he paid 846 for the food and now he is going to have a 56 cent tax. So now I'm gonna do the 846 plus 56 cents to figure out how much he paid in total. So six plus six is 12, one plus four plus five is 10, one plus eight plus zero is nine. So he paid 902. But the question says, how much change will he get back if he pays with a $20 bill? So now I need to do 20 minus what he paid to figure out his change. So 20 minus 9.02. I'm gonna need to do some borrowing here. Change to a one, nine, nine. Okay, 10 minus two is eight. Nine minus zero is nine. Nine minus nine is zero. And we'll bring down the one. So he will pay, or he will get $10.98 back in change.